Welcome back everybody. We have work to do. My little popcorn Haruri is not blooming. And every time a pseudobulb grows, it starts to get all shriveled up. And even though it's growing another growth, you can see it's trying to get variegated. I don't mind, but I don't think that's normal. It's a vigorous little plant, but uh, hasn't bloomed for me in two years. And I believe because it is not in its right set of circumstances anymore. So I have been unmounting a lot of orchids, but this one I think is going to do much better mounted where I can give it enough humidity and spray around the roots better than what is actually helping right now with the lava rock setup that I have. It seemed to work fine for one year and one year only. And the bigger she gets, the more demanding she gets. So we're going to mount this one together. And as I use inorganic mounts, and I've used them for a long time quite successfully, I thought I might as well show you what I do and see if it's something that appeals to you as well if you have a similar set of circumstances. I'm in the Mediterranean climate, it is very hot. It is not humid enough in the summer. I love to water my orchids. I have no problem giving them all the water they need. The reverse is true, however, trying to be a little bit more easing up on the watering. It's a beautiful day outside, which includes everybody else enjoying the day outside. There is a lot of traffic and a lot of children going back and forth. I hope that you can hear me. If not, let me know and I will elaborate in the comments below. But I think just the video itself will tell the story. I just yap away and geek out over orchids because I like orchids. So what I'm doing now is just preparing a fishing line to go around my inorganic mount. And I can pretty much tie this fishing line anywhere I want on the mount. And that's why I like it so much. I can be very targeted. And I keep looking at the camera to make sure I am in shot. Well, I've chosen just a little spot around the middle, the centerpiece, where I believe I'm going to put my orchid. This mount, or the mounts that I use, are formerly placemats that you put on a table to put your plate on. And they have been taken away. I have other placemats now, because these are, for me, perfect for mounting an orchid if I can keep it watered enough. And I believe that I can with this one. Why am I mounting it and not putting it into my preferred setup? I'm glad you asked, because I am an advocate for LECA and self-watering, because it's a climber. Its growing habit is so not conducive to LECA and self-watering. You can see that I could literally take these two apart, but for the sake and ease of my job at hand, I'm not going to. Some mounts I have hanging square. Some mounts I have, like this one, diagonal, because I think it looks pretty. So this one is gonna go diagonal. Let me cut enough fishing line.
and let's get started. I think this is how I want to place her because I think the diagonal effect is going to look pretty and she can sprawl out over the edges if she wants. But first of all, I can see there is a nasty little bulb back here. Is it worth taking off? It's always worth trying. There we go, a bit of garbage. And let's get her mounted up. It's going to get a little bit fiddly in the beginning, but it's well worth it long term. I'm going to start with the top piece. And I can target my thread through all these little noops where it's allowed. Some orchids have very big root systems. I can't do that, so I just wrap it around the whole mount. And in some cases, I can be a little bit more specific as to where I want to go. And that's where I want to go, in there. Trying to keep this in shot. first loop. I am actually going to take this one off. It's going to make my life a little bit easier. And you can see what I'm doing is just threading it through. Very targeted as to where I want the orchid to sit through the nodes of my mount. Now you can see there is a root growing there. It's still on the lava rock. As it's inorganic, I don't mind it being there. But before I tie a little bit more on, I'm gonna put a little bit of sphagnum moss across the top just to protect it from the fishing line. Now we turn it around and tie the first piece off at the back. I'm doing a reef knot, courtesy of my dad, former captain of a ship. I got to learn all the knots of which I only remember a few. Alrighty, that's the first piece. There we go. Now to repeat the same with the second. The stump is dead. So I'm going to cut it off. There is no more roots there that are viable for me. And 
and just take all that old stuff off and then I think I have a better angle that I can deal with. That is the plan. The only maintenance on these mounts will be picking off the moss once it is time to remoss. So I have that there. I'll put some moss, tuck it in there. Oh, and look, that's why we have a variegation happening. Look at those. Oh, yeah. You are going to be so history so very soon. Enjoy your last moments on my orchid. A little bit of alcohol to get it started. Goodbye. Get off my orchid. Let's find the tassel. Where are we at and where do we have to go? That's the first loop right there, but that's not where I want the fishing line to be. There we go. I can be quite rigorous with the pull, and then I just keep doing this until my orchid is secure on all sides. Okay, granted, organic mounts are less of a fiddle because you just wrap and wrap and wrap. I just think that long term, this helps me. I can pack on as much moss in the summer as this orchid will need and take it off for the winter and re-moss in the spring, which you could also do with an organic mount. Absolutely. But I hope you get the idea of why and how I mount my orchids on these inorganic mounts. Now that piece is secure, so I'm just going to tie it off in the back. with my loose end here. There we go. So pretty much, if it were winter, I would leave her like that. But now that it's summer, I'm going to put a layer of moss around her. So everywhere where I have roots, I know it looks all very one-sided, but those are where the roots are and I want her to be able to have roots that dry out and roots that can go into the wet moss. It also gives me better control as I learn about her behavior on a mount. I've also found I use a lot less fishing line with these mounts. Embroidery with orchids or so, cross stitch. Anyone? <laughs> In the first year, I had it with this one 
and she grew this growth right here, which bloomed. Then it's tried another one, but it keeps desiccating. So that's why my thought process is what I, to do what I'm doing now. I think that's all there is to it. I don't think she's going anywhere. So I used one bit of fishing line to tie on two pieces of orchid and sphagnum moss. And that will be it. There are other cases where I would need more, depending on the root bowl. But this is a really good example, turned out kind of well, that how I um, mount these guys on this inorganic mount. And I actually still have some left over. Having gotten a bit ahead of myself, I should have clamped, done this tag right at the beginning so that I don't have to worry about it anymore. But I got away with it this time without too much of a fiddle and a, and a faff. Let's get the hook tucked away. There we go. And that is my Haruri mounted up. And then just one final thing left to do. Give her a good spray. You see in the winter I can just spray the back if need be. This helps me not to compromise the crown or anything like that. You pee for summer. We can go all in. So if you have any questions regarding this method, if something wasn't clear and shot, and if my editing was awful with what I had just filmed, forgive me, but please ask in the comments below. And I'll be extremely happy to qualify further what I've done, why I've done it, and We'll keep her in mind on our updates, bits, bobs and surprises and see how she does. And see if this one will bloom for me. Maybe this one as well. I don't know. With more hydration, we have options. So thank you very much everybody for watching. For the unsteadiness of the filming, etc. I appreciate your patience with me. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Bye. Now that the tortile has left a big gaping gap, Popcorn Haruri has taken its place and the light comes straight opposite, straight from this angle, shining that way. So if any spikes develop, it would be a pretty little show. All right, everybody, thank you very much. Just wanted to add on her new living space. Take care. Bye. Mm -hmm.